G'day guys, welcome back to Wood and Steel Creations. Um, we've had quite a few requests to do a, a report back in after owning this uh, Chinese made lint CNC for 12 months, it's 18 months now. So we're doing the 18th, 18 month uh, update and filling you guys in about this machine. Is it still working? It is. Um, what's the experience like? Meh. Um, <laughs> but it is still working. I, we, well, we have actually, this is my son Josh, I should introduce Joshy. Hi. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, so Joshy's worked on a few projects with me, uh, with, the, with this machine. Really want to get out of the way what the last 18 months has been, and we'll, then we'll talk about some jobs. The machine has been okay in the way that I've learnt a lot, and it's been a really great experience, and I've produced some really cool jobs. The downside of it is, is as you know, Lint CNC, if you've watched the other videos, Lint CNC did rip me off $3,500 by shipping it to the wrong port. And they know damn well they did that and they did it on purpose because what I think they did, instead of sending it to the Brisbane port, they sent it to the Sydney port because they had other machines in a container. So they made it cheaper for themselves while costing me three and a half grand. So, even though the machine is what I expected, and a low-level machine that I had to work on, Lint CNC themselves are a morally corrupt um, Care Factor Zero company, and that would be really the reason why I would not recommend you go anywhere near Lint CNC. I've read a few other reports online from a few other people where they didn't even receive a um, machine after they left a deposit and it had sort of a a, uh, maybe a communication breakdown with the same person that I was dealing with because they mentioned the same person's name and you know all of that so it's definitely the same person I was dealing with. At least I got my machine where some other people haven't um, and there has been a lot of other qu quality issues with this brand and I can attest to that. Um, so we've got a, a panel over here that's flapping around um, that's been flapping around for a while because I just haven't bothered to retap the holes because I, I didn't want to just retap two of the holes. I'm actually just going to do them all at once. So uh, they're five, mil, five millimeter screws holding that on. Mm -hmm. And the, the way they've tapped the holes is like, I don't know, they roughed it out with something that wasn't appropriate. So the, the screws aren't able to be tight and properly in the holes, or they've just used a really bad tap and just screwed up the holes. So I've got to retap all of those fittings and put them all back in because they're going to continue to fall out. Um, the oiling system, I had to reroute all of that because um, there was no care given to how the lines would run once you pumped it. It all just run to one spot and all this oil burst out everywhere where nowhere else got oiled. So I had to fix that. The spindle, there's no fine adjustment to adjusting the tram on that. Um, I've had to pull that off twice now and realign the head and try to make it a bit better. I do have another, next time it does stuff up, I've got another plan to put some fine screw adjustments in there, but I've got to do that. The manufacturer should have done that. Um, so anyway, overall assembly quality of this machine, let's give it a four out of 10. My overall satisfaction of the machine is probably about seven or eight out of 10, only because I knew that I was buying a budget grade Chinese made CNC. And I expected it to be a certain thing because I paid, I think overall, let's say 15 grand overall landed. That's with the additional three and a half thousand dollar cost that Lint CNC cost me and refused to reimburse me by the way. They were super arrogant about it. Um, but anyway, so I'm not happy with the company clearly. But I'm pretty happy with the machine overall because I do have skills behind me where I can fix things. Um, what else can I say? Um, that piece that holds that gun sort of thing that broke off. Oh, the air gun thing. Yeah, I just knocked that. That fell off. So, oh, the th this is a vacuum table machine. The the vacuum pump. I'm, I'm looking over there because I'm looking at the monstrosity <laughs> that they sent me for the vacuum machine. I've never seen anything like it, but it's gigantic. Um, and I don't think I'm going to wind up using that. I'm just going to get some other those smaller those some smaller pumps which will fit under the under the CNC and then turn them on and off as isolated units. Yeah. 
So, so it is pretty Yeah, the, <laughs> man, it's huge. It's massive. You can't move it on your own. And it's just a ridiculous looking thing. And there's no real clear way to wire it up. Oh, there is. I know where the terminal box is, but nothing's labelled. And yeah, anyway, I'm not going to bother with that. So, yes, the machine is cool and 18 months later is going. And I've created some really cool products with it. Would I buy from Lindsay and say, no, I've made that very clear, and I really suggest you guys to avoid them, go to another company, um, pay maybe $1,000 more, $2,000 more for the actual machine, and don't get the Chinese companies to freight it to you. And this is where I really could have saved my butt here. Um, get, go to a, uh, what do they call it, a freight forwarder or a freight broker in your own town. So. At your port or somewhere around there, there will be your own local um, freight broker and get them to manage and organise the machine to come get picked up or at least loaded into the boat over in its home port and brought over to you. If you get the CNC manufacturer, they'll do, they could possibly do to you what they did to me, is ignore your port, load your machine into the same box as everybody else's machine and they'll send it to the most cheapest convenient port to them. Once it's in your country, they just go too bad. Which is a really terrible thing to do, and that's what this company is, and that's why I won't deal with them. Anyway, on a happier note, things that we've been working on. So one of the things we've been working on is our own guitar bodies. Mm -hmm. And so these are a couple of prototypes where we've stuck nine pieces of hardwood together and put a, a cedar inlay into them. And then on the back, we've done... A resin fill. A resin fill. And the reason why we've done these is just to check if Australian hardwoods will indeed glue together and stay glued together without too much body movement. And these are about six months old now. Well, four months? Six months. Probably easily six months. Yeah. These are probably six months old and they have not sort of shifted or done anything weird. So we will turn these into guitars. Um, Staying on the subject of guitars, if any of you guys know anything about these, this is a Fender Squire Telecaster. This one was, once upon a time, a translucent white. There was no belly cuts, it was just big square slab of timber. I pulled it apart, refinished it, and put some inlays into the body, which you can kind of see there. This is a very dark stain. Some little hexes that I put into there, reshaped the whole guitar. Yeah, so the little hexes we did work for inlays with the CNC. Yeah. And Joshy's one. So Joshy's guitar is the second one. This was a black Stratocaster. And um, yeah, again, we went with the hexes, except I did a better pattern this time. Uh, with a polyurethane finish. So we sanded all that back. Well, it had a polyurethane finish. Well, yes. Yeah, it. yeah, and so we strip all the polyurethane finish off there and put a, a more suitable finish on there and we learn to stay in and play. And the last one, which we finished yesterday, and these guitars are actually up on a, uh, another website of ours called Gear Cave. We've got gearcave.com as a web, or .com.au for our website, and we also have Gear Cave as our YouTube channel. So if you want to see these guitars transformed into what they are today, this was a yellow polyurethane finished yeah, so a translucent yellow. Plain guitar. It was, uh, yeah, you know, just traditionally butterscotch yellow. Yep. And now it's this. And this has also got inlays in it. And these are one of the inlays that we did. So that's the cedar. Uh, red cedar? Yeah, red cedar. It's not really focusing on it. But um, so the inlays that we're putting into these, they're not just 5mm thick. The first ones were about 15mm thick. And these ones are about 8mm thick. But um, yeah, I do them like that just so they don't. I don't know. I'm learning. And thick seems better than thin. Um, what else? Oh yes, I have made some signage, some big, big letters. These, um, this is a dud because one of the things that this CNC does do is lose its mind while it's cutting and it will just start cutting through your job. So it's not a machine that you want to walk away from for extended periods of time if it's doing some um, cutting materials that are worth a bit of money, like this sheet is about a $700 sheet that I was cutting all these letters out of. Um, then it decided to go crazy and cut two letters in half, this being one of them, that big groove. Mm. 
Um, yeah, so they wound up being... I did a fabricated back on them, fill them full of LEDs, they got two-pack painted pink, and they spell vibe up on a building with a halo effect around them. So they did four sets of those. So that was a good job for this machine. It was actually the first job I put through it. Um, what else? EVA foam, so I've been doing boat flooring as well, you know, um, grooving this and um, putting logos in it and grooves and doing boat floors. That, that's, that's difficult. That's why I need the vacuum, to be honest, to do that really well. So, but I won't be using that vacuum. Oh, you should do maybe the... Um, yes. Oh, we've got a seat there. Joshy's, Joshy will go and jump over to a, a, a film over. All right, um, what else? Um, Alright, so after a couple of months of bashing my head against the machine trying to get it work, I finally figured out how to hook this guy up. It, this is really good. So just showing the machine does actually work. Oops. If I put it on the right setting. Yeah, so... Um, really good. I really like that. And you can really fine tune in where you're going to set the home for the machine with this. Uh, so when, once I started using this after a month or so, or probably a couple of months, um, it, yeah, this helped a lot. So that's our last sort of whinge about uh, Lint CNC. Our future videos will be purely us working on jobs. Jump over to Gear Cave. Joshy will put some links down to the description and you'll see us routering out the bodies of the guitars and put the inlays and refinishing. Um, so if you're interested in that, jump over to there. And but um, our next videos will be actually working on the CNC cutting out project. So hopefully you guys will stick around and have a look, and yep. you might even see the machine blow up as we're doing a job. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> It'd be a good video. Anyway, yeah. guys, thanks for dropping in. Um, that's our 18 month short review conclusion. Can be a good machine. Needs man hours. Um, to complete the work that should have been done. So that's why it is cheap though. So weigh it up. It, there's risk and there's reward. So anyway, cool. Thanks for sticking around and uh, next videos will be jobs. So yeah, please like, subscribe. And hit the bell for notifications. Cool. All right. Thanks guys. Good videos coming. <laughs>